Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live. This is theCUBE in Las Vegas with IBM Interconnect, a special presentation of theCUBE where we go out and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest I'm super excited for because we talk all the time online. We don't see each other in person except at these events. It's good to have an intimate conversation. Our next guest, Amber Armstrong, Program Director, IBM Social Business. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much. The Cube is one big crowd chat, but three of us, and hopefully <laughs> we really can't chat with anyone else, but there is a crowd chat online right now, so if you're watching, go to crowdchat.net slash IBM Interconnect. We'll be watching. Bring the questions in. Amber is probably the best power user we've seen on the crowd chat, um, mainly because you guys have such a great community, but. You guys are really doing well, and, and, and people who know me and Dave know that we love social business because it's not about the PR and the buzz and just talking to yourself, it's actually connecting with relationships and using that interaction engagement to create more attraction, more people interacting, to create data, to create engagement, and that's the holy grail right now. So tell us, how's it going? How did you get here? And can you be prolific at the same time of creating value? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know, try. <laughs> um, no, we, you know, we, when we do the crowd chats, one of the big pieces that works for us most is we bring in our influencers. And you bring them in based on the topic. So you try to figure out you know, what's going to be the most valuable to the audience around this particular topic. And then you bring in the right influencers and you, you know, run through the questions. We try to do, make our crowd chats really visual, and so we put the questions up with, you know, the the, t the, t the tiles, and we also try to get things so that they're also kind of pushing out to Twitter overall, and trying to bring as many people as we can into the conversation. You know, what I really also love about it is, it's activating, and I, th I think the term I like to use is crowd-activated innovation, because what you're doing is, you're not selling anything, you're providing a virtual venue around a constructed theme, so, mm -hmm. so it, kind of looks top-down structured, but the soil of organic growth is all going to be based upon the interaction and the topic. So it's truly the winning formula, in my opinion, of what we call, what we call earned media. So, so I want to get your take on this. Vis-a-vis -vis the old way, webinar, we have a webinar, give me your email address, give me your firstborn, we're going to sell you something, watch this video, there's no interaction. And maybe you can ask a question at the end. Right. So that's webinars, the old way. How yeah. would you compare and contrast this new way of yeah. social. Well, it's uh, really about you know starting the conversations early, often, you know, really engaging with people so that when they think of social business, they think of how are they going to reach their customers. They're thinking about commerce. They automatically think of IBM, and then they drive into our owned channels to get the additional information and to really start engaging with us. But we spend our full time is providing value out to them. Even when they, they we're not unsolicited, we're not trying to push them towards anything. But if we just push out value, then we believe that they will come back to us. And we're seeing a great increase on our website visits. Um, we've done a lot of work with TED at IBM. We just did the IBM Verse launch. And all these things, because of the value we're providing to customers, we're seeing that land back on our own properties. So talk about the experience you've had with, with TED at IBM and other, other uh, chats you've done. Because the crowd chat thing we've been interacting on. But I, I bring up the crowd chat because we built it to be easy to stand up. What you're doing is you're standing up social programs, almost ad hoc, but yet structured themes. This is the new way, this is the cloud way. Standing mm -hmm. something up is a cloud geek term. Stand up with some new servers. So with the hashtags, mm -hmm. they provide a great dis uh, direct response opportunity vehicle. Great. So hey, advertise the hashtag, direct response, I'm noticing you're doing that. And users are using hashtags to navigate. So this trend of the hashtags being a direct response vehicle for advertising an event, if you will, or chat, mm -hmm. and then users navigating is the perfect storm for this innovation. Um, talk about how you guys did that, because at TED at IBM, you guys executed with non-disruptive operations in your group. You just plugged in the social programs, 
and things just kind of yeah. smooth. It's about building series of content. And so what we did is we started out with you know, we would have influencers come in, we would bring in our speakers that were going to be at TED, and we started months and months before TED, where we would put together what we called smart packs, and it would be, we would do a tweet chat, we would have infographics, blogs, and you put that content out there so that you're already building awareness for that speaker, and people are interested, they're like, oh, we want to come and talk to this person. And so it just kind of, you do it in a series so people get used to it. And now we've switched it and we're doing the, because TED at IBM happened last year. Now we're on New Way to Work and so we do our New Way to Work t tweet chats. Same kind of thing, we put it out there. We did a great influencer event with Pure Matter and we filmed the, the influencers and we now put out blogs, tweet chats, you know, it, the same kind of process, just in a series so people learn to kind of constantly come back for it. So a couple other things, um, you, you've, you're, your Twitter stream is very visual, I noticed. Like 99% of what you tweet has a visual in there. Yes. Is that just based on you know that it plays better? Is it based on yeah. research that you guys did? Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a rule. Um, so we always use the visual. We actually use dynamic signal to do a lot of our employee advocacy, mm -hmm. and you have to have a visual in there, so that's one of the reasons you see when IBM employees are sharing, then it's because it, you know they, they're pulling it out of dynamic signal getting it out to all their channels. But we also, we have rules about, you know, if we're going to put an image on there, we'd use it to the exact Twitter dimensions, because that can still play in Facebook and LinkedIn, but you got to make it so that when someone's looking in that preview screen, that they see the core message, or sometimes, you know, a couple of things I posted last night was I posted a picture of, you know, it's a really silly example, but a cupcake that had a new way to work on it. And it was kind of this interesting image, and I looked at the tweet stats on it today, and 190 people <laughs> looked at that image, and it was just a cupcake. <laughs> Images are fantastic. So, so you'll, so the dynamic signal is part of your workflow. It's a, it's like a, I know a little bit about it. It's like an employee yeah, advocacy. Yeah, it's an employee type advocacy of. tool, and what it does is it allows our. We have about 500 employees that share very actively for a social business. IBM on whole has about 6,500 that are, that are sharing our content all through Dynamic Signal. My team puts the content in there, and then you go in and you know, 10, 15 minutes a day, you can share out that content, and you can automate it to go out. The way I tend to do it, if you watch my stream, is I tend to post things four times, mm -hmm. because it hits the different time zones. And then I've, I've tried it out, you know, it, but I don't lose engagement by doing that. I get the same, sometimes the third time I post something is when it gets the most engagement. And so it's really fun to kind of watch and just kind of see. That's interesting, so you're not worried about the repetition. Repetition is actually a good thing, because you're going to hit different parts of your social graph. Yeah. Um, what about email marketing? Does that still fit into this whole social play? Yeah, it does, so? it does. So it, one of the things that we just launched was IBM Verse, and hopefully you guys are hearing a lot about IBM Verse here at the conference. And with, with Verse, you know, we wanted to drive registrations. We wanted people to sign up for Verse. It's a freemium, it's you know, this great product, but we need names, email addresses, titles, all that kind of great stuff. So Verse is now being launched. We're starting to ramp people into it, but there's this whole time frame from when we did the launch in November until now. And so we're just now starting to bring people in. We've been continuing that conversation via email. We've been giving people access to private content, so it's unique, only only registered people get to see it. Um, and then we're pulling people into Verse based on some priority things. For example, people that attended Connect Ed, people that are registering here from Interconnect are also going to get prioritized. If, if I asked um, companies, let's say a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. do you put Twitter handles in your CRM? I would say close to 100% would have said no. Right. Um, and that's starting to change. Uh, if I ask you that, <laughs> what's, what's your answer? How are you using things like Twitter handles? Yeah, I think we're still learning on it, but we, we are. We definitely do it. We also use a lot of tools. So an interesting kind of thing, a stat that I just looked at this morning, is we use a tool called Mutual Mind. I think you guys just sure, yeah. talked just to Mutual Mind, right? Yeah, right? yeah, so we use Mutual Mind. So we have all of our influencer handles, all of our employee advocacy handles, and I can tell you what percentage of the Twitter impressions were driven by those groups. So we've got 20 social influencers here, 
and yesterday that drove 35% of the impressions for the overall conference. And so being able to track those handles, it helps you understand kind of where, where are you getting the biggest but they're, impact. But they're a small percentage of the overall population, yet yeah, they're, they're driving. Yeah, they're 20 people, so maybe what? Okay, so I got to ask you the question, because I love this, this is my favorite. I, this, you know I love social. What does join the conversation mean? If you advertise join the conversation, where do I go? Is there like a website? Is there a join the conversation website? Do I go to Twitter? Do I go to Tumblr? Do I go to Instagram? Is there a hashtag? You guys are figuring this out. I mean, yeah. obviously, it's a little biased with the crowd chat, but you, if, if this audience is generating 35% of the activity, mm -hmm. they're essentially ginning up conversations. How does someone join? The hashtag. The hashtag we're using is new way to work. And so what you'll see, you're seeing us do now, we've been having the first conversations on that hashtag. We've been talking about the future of work. We just launched a new website a couple days ago, ibm.com yep. slash futurists and the, all of our influencer content is there. You'll see all the videos, all of that stuff. So if someone can go there, but then the actual conversations are happening on Twitter. Okay. You know, go in and we're now joining that new way to work conversation with the IBM Interconnect conversation by kind of merging those handles yeah. and helping those communities get to know yeah. each other. Yeah, and you know, I got to say, that is such a great strategy because we, with the crowd chats, not a full in the wild. People love to go walk around the park, if you will, of the social web, which is Twitter, but in the moment. like. That's how you meet people. Then you can have structured conversations and record them. So what's the next thing that you're seeing is the next innovation beyond that? So I'm a user, I want to join the conversation, I dial up Twitter, that's the channel, new way to work, hashtag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I come in, there's a lot of noise in there. What are you guys doing? You can drive the websites, you've got crowd chat, you've got your ambassadors. And it's, it's the biggest thing that I'm focused on is getting other people to tell our story and they don't do it on brand, they do it, you know, hopefully not terribly off brand, right? Yeah. But in their channel that they would like to choose. Letting right? people tell that story is really important because you want your employees to tell it, you want your customers to tell it, you want your external influencers to tell it, you want industry experts to tell it. And so we're building relationships with all of these people yeah. and letting them tell their story that is really closely aligned to ours. Yeah. And when you know you want to engage in that conversation. Well, you go to the hashtag, of course, yeah. but you also go to the person that you know that you trust, right? Yeah. So you go to Brian Kramer, Brian Fianzo, yeah. or Jeff Chien. And there's no one answer. People yeah. have their little, come to my little house and we'll sit here, or let's go in the park, or let's go here. So it's about horizontally scaling this conversation. Do you see it? Yeah, absolutely. And you I mean, you go to your, your employees, right? Or your, our employees, but yeah. you go to your friend who works at IBM, and you say, hey, I heard about this thing, you know? So it's all yeah. about finding what's the most trusted route and let those people tell the story. And then we are there to kind of catch and receive. Awesome, well, I would like to just end the segment by saying thanks, great to work with you guys. Uh, share with the folks out there, just best practice, philosophy. How, what's the, what's the new way to think? around social? What's the new way to execute sure. and bring some of these best practices into, into their company? So if they can move social from a PR activity that no one really sees value other than creating a short-term buzz, splash in the pool, if you will, mm -hmm. so when, to take it to the next level, what's, the, what's your advice, mindset-wise, how they should think, how they should work it, how they should build it, how they should execute it? I think everybody should have an employee advocacy program. It's, it's astounding the amount of impact you can drive by doing that and you know for companies that don't I mean it's so easy to start and it makes such a huge impact we started with 60 people in one week and we drove 35,000 clicks right now our advocates are driving 55,000 clicks like that's it's really impactful and it's working and so I would say start with employee advocacy as you start to ramp up then you can build in more of this influencer piece and working with these external influencers and then what I think the real magic is taking the external influencers and powering their content with your employee advocates and really merging those, you've got this kind of shared value overall and it's, it's that's the, been That's great. the owned, paid, and earned media coming together mm -hmm, in a very clean, authentic, fully transparent way. And it's, it's sharing yeah. the value, you know, there's a lot of different ways to share value yeah. across influencer channels, all the different channels, and so finding ways to really do that in meaningful ways that's, you know, you can do it with sponsorships, that sort of thing. There's a lot of different ways. Yeah, it's data-driven it. too, so it's all data-driven. Absolutely. 
Amber, you guys have lightning in a bottle. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. It's just the beginning, so I know it's going to morph and take a whole other direction. Uh, I've always been a big fan of social business, and I would just be in a, a, a longtime IBM observer. You know, back in the 90s, IBM pioneered e-business, which no one uses anymore. It's just called the web. It's called the internet, right? Now, social business is the same thing. So I really think you guys are on to something as a company and what you're doing. Congratulations. This is theCUBE out sharing our social media with you with Amber here, talking about the best practices, new way to work, new way to build, new way to collaborate, new way to engage, new way to measure it, new way to connect with customers through all this new great social media, social business. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.